Former presidential nominee Bernie Saunders might be cheap, but I promise you, he isn't poor. In the wake of his 2016 presidential run, this self-described democratic socialist became a homeowner three times over, with a net worth approaching $2 million. For the most part, Bernie's wealth can be attributed to the slate of best-selling books he's released over the past few years. But based upon his property records from Vermont and Washington, D.C., Bernie's current financial success might have more to do with decades of proper planning as opposed to a sheer stroke of luck. Before he became an owner of three homes, Bernie Saunders grew up in a rent-controlled apartment with just three and a half rooms in the Flatbush neighborhood of Brooklyn, where he ate bottom-of-the-barrel groceries and wore hand-me-down clothes. It left a mark on him and decades later, he'd hold a campaign rally outside of that very same building. Bernie's mom died when he was 18. Two years later, his father passed away as well. After their deaths, he inherited a few thousand dollars and then the summer after he graduated from the University of Chicago, he spent $2,500 to buy 85 acres of meadow and woods in Middlesex, Vermont, an out of the way piece of land that came with an old maple sugar house. With no electricity or running water, this home didn't exactly work out for Bernie, and he continued to remain poor right up until when he ran for mayor of Burlington, Vermont. He won that election by 10 votes, and his new job came with a salary of $33,000 the equivalent of more than $100,000 in today's day and age. Shortly after his first re-election in 1983, Bernie Saunders finally stopped renting. With a mortgage of right around $50,000, he purchased a two-story, six-room, 1,900-square-foot house on Catherine Street in Burlington, a mile south of City Hall. Even though he was a homeowner now, Bernie still didn't have much in the way of furniture. Shortly after, Bernie sold that home for $82,000, which is a pretty decent return on his investment. About three months later, he moved into a $175,000 three-bedroom, two-bathroom, 1,600-square-foot home in the picturesque neighborhood of Lake Champlain. Situated on a street known as Killarney Drive, this home was described as a red-paneled, boxy, split-level home that could have fit anywhere in middle-class suburbia. Decades later, Bernie and his wife Jane would finally return to Burlington, Vermont, when they purchased the $405,000 four-bedroom, 2,352 square foot house sitting atop a hill on Van Patten Parkway. Interestingly enough, Bernie and his wife bought this property from Jane's son, David Driscoll. David and his wife then bought Bernie and Jane's house on Killarney Drive for $265,000. So basically, the two couples simply swapped homes. Bernie's new cream-colored colonial was more or less exactly where you would expect to find a couple of doting grandparents living, as Yahoo found out when they stopped by for a tour of the home a few years ago. For the most part, however, all Jane wanted to show off was the artwork and photos hanging on their walls. But if you pay close attention, you can notice little details like a wood-burning stove, built-in shelving, and a music room that comes complete with a keyboard, drum sets, and signed Christmas cards from the Clintons. And guess what? Bernie and his wife still live there to this day, using it as their primary address. But whenever he is in Washington, D.C. for work, he's got a historical residence to call home. Back in 2006, Bernie Saunders was elected to the Senate. With this new role, he moved to Washington, D.C. and bought himself a row home in the U.S. Capitol for $489,000. With a price tag like that attached to it, this home became the most expensive of all Bernie's properties, despite the fact that it's also the smallest. In fact, this one-bedroom townhouse holds just 892 square feet in total. To make up for that, it's located just blocks from where Bernie worked at the Senate. Originally built in 1890, this no-frills home also contains two bathrooms and is situated just half a block from the lovely Stanton Park. Today, it's estimated that Bernie's Washington home is worth close to $750,000. And who knows, with him seemingly winding down his political career, maybe it's getting close to time to move off this property. For now though, Bernie seems content to simply just adding to his portfolio. So let's check out his most recent purchase next. Just 20 miles south of the Canadian border is the lovely island of North Hero, where Bernie Sanders purchased himself a summer house back in 2016. Boasting rustic wood sides, a silver-colored tin roof, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, as well as 500 feet of waterfront, Bernie and Jane bought this home for $575,000. 
using a private trust so that they could finally own a property worth keeping in the family. Although Bernie and Jane looked at a number of options before settling on this one, in the end, they were drawn to this home in particular because of its incredible views of Vermont and the Green Mountain. You'll find Bernie's new retreat past horses and silos, as well as campsites and apple farms, nestled at the end of a gravel lake, hidden behind evergreens and looking out over the gorgeous blue of Lake Champlain. And while his address ended up becoming fodder to be used against him during his 2020 presidential campaign, Bernie always leaned on his trademark sense of humor whenever it was mentioned. Boasting 1,883 square feet of historic beauty, this log cabin was originally constructed in 1920 on 1.1 acres of land and boasts a large open concept kitchen that's no doubt the perfect spot for Bernie to cook up a few family-sized meals. There's also a spacious screened-in family-sized porch for little rest and relaxation when it comes to spending time with the grandkids. Speaking of visitors, whenever they do show up, there's an attached guest quarters to stay in. All of the property's four bedrooms look both cozy and comfy, while the primary suite opens right up to the outside to provide the most seamless experience possible when it comes to countryside living. Outside of whatever they get up to around their new home, Bernie and his family can also spend time in the surrounding area that includes dining at the historic inn known as North Hero House. They can even pay a visit to Hero's Welcome General Store, which sells a sandwich named after Bernie called Feel the Bun that comes with turkey, provolone, homemade apple chutney, lettuce, tomato, and its key ingredient, hot pepper relish. As if that wasn't cool enough, kayaking, boating, and apple picking are other prominent activities the family can try out whenever the season is right. For today though, that'll bring this latest edition of House Tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you move on, consider answering the following question. Should being a self-described democratic socialist disqualify you from being a millionaire with three homes simply on principle? Let me know what you think about Bernie's wealth in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. If you want to keep exploring more properties with me, then coming up, I'll be taking you inside the homes of Bernie's rival, Hillary Clinton. So stay tuned. I'll see you all next time. Bye. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Bill and Hillary Clinton have definitely transitioned from middle class to multimillionaires over the years, and it's notable when we take a look at the couple's home. The first property Bill and Hillary lived at before they were public figures is located in Arkansas, and the quaint one-bedroom spread has now been made into a museum. Well, after this, the Clintons lived in government-provided residences for 18 years. This included the governor's mansion in Arkansas to the White House. After Bill's run as president of the United States, the couple would settle into their current home in 1999, a four-level white Georgian colonial located in Chippewa, New York. Before we look at Bill and Hillary Clinton's main family home, let's check out some they've lived in over the years. The first known property of the couple before they became public figures is a quaint residence that's now on the National Register of Historic Places. Located in Arkansas, more specifically in the area of Fayetteville, this humble abode spanned 1,800 square feet of space and offered only one bedroom. The future president of the United States and Secretary of State were married in the living room of this home in October of 1975, and it was an active center for political activity in Arkansas during these years. Almost two decades later, Bill and Hillary would enter the White House. The home, which is now a museum, is a well-maintained 1930s Tudor revival style in the Ozark Mountains. These days, the exhibits at the museum include memorabilia from Bill's early political career and even more personal items like a replica of Hillary's wedding dress. Outside, the home offers the First Lady's Garden, which is stocked full of Hillary's favorite flowers. Next up, the Clintons lived in this Arkansas home from 1976 to 1978, while Bill was the Attorney General of Arkansas in Little Rock. The also humbly sized two bedroom abode was a stepping stone for the couple before they would move into the governor's mansion. Bill and Hillary would live in the governor's mansion in Little Rock 
two separate times, considering Clinton served as the governor of this state for five terms, from 1979 to 1981, and then again from 1983 to 1992. The large mansion was a step up from what the couple was used to with its opulent exterior, fountains, and all. As I'm sure you know, the Clintons would next move into the White House when Bill became president of the United States from 1993 to 2001. Bill, Hillary, and their daughter Chelsea called this place home for nearly a decade. And in 2000, the pair gave a tour of the home for Fox News. The stateroom also got a redesign from Hillary herself during their tenure here. After Bill and Hillary departed the White House after his run as president, they found a home on Old House Lane in Chappaqua, New York, which they quickly snapped up for $1.7 million in 1999. This home also served as their residence while Hillary Clinton was a New York senator from 2001 to 2009. And surprisingly enough, the couple still reside in this very home while their daughter moved to New York City. The Clintons keep their main home tightly under wraps but it's a four-story white Georgian colonial abode, and from what we have seen, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Located on a tree-lined cul-de-sac, the property spans a sprawling 1.1 acres of land, while the main house's exterior is characterized by the barn-like shape of the roof. The home was built in 1889, which is certainly old and historic, but this area of New York apparently has quite a bit of homes from this time period. While the home cost the Clintons nearly $2 million, it was said that they were up to their ears in debt at the time of purchase from legal bills while they were in the White House. They first accepted help from a friend and fundraiser, Terry McAuliffe, to secure the mortgage on the Chappaqua home, but they turned down his offer due to criticism from the public. They got it either way. Tucked away in a wooded area, the Clintons live 35 miles outside of New York City, while inside the home offers 11 rooms, including a reported five bedrooms and four bathrooms. On the grounds of the home, there's a large swimming pool, as well as other features like a red barn structure. The barn is apparently where the family's security staff used to live. A large white fence surrounds their property while an additional security office was placed at the front gate for protection. When Bill and Hillary first chose this home, neighbors weren't too pleased. Chappaqua had a small population and residents didn't want all the commotion that this famous family might bring. No local country or golf clubs would admit the Clintons at first as members worried about the disruption they would create. So back then, Bill and Hillary had to find the next closest option, so they joined Donald Trump's Trump National Golf Club Westchester. I wonder if any of the clubs are letting them in these days. Their home was known in the town's history as Little Brook Farm, and it seemed a bit unimpressive for a family of their caliber. A real estate agent at the time the Clintons moved in said the lovely living space included a large living room that flowed into a library, which is perfect for book-loving Bill, and there was also a family room connected to the kitchen as well as a sunroom. Back in the early 2000s, fans also got a glimpse inside the residence when Bill took Oprah on a tour of the property in a short segment on her talk show. Bill showed off his favorite rooms in the home as well as the couple's collection of mementos from their world travels. These included a South African souvenir and a large rain stick. He also took viewers inside that red barn which was converted into the space that it is today, serving as a guest house or staff quarters or whatever. In 2016, Bill and Hillary Clinton reportedly expanded on their longtime home in Chappaqua by purchasing the house next door for $1.16 million. The ranch style abode is set on just over 1.5 tree dotted acres on the same cul-de-sac they've been living in. Rumors were that the new home could possibly have been meant as a visiting retreat for the couple's daughter Chelsea and her family, including her two kids. Inside the additional home span 3,631 square feet of space, along with three bedrooms throughout and a 212 square foot basement. The property had been recently renovated and offered an open plan layout with a ton of windows, adding natural light as well as pecan colored wood floors underfoot. Other highlights of this property included a modern chef's kitchen with brand name appliances, which then opened to an eating area with fireplace, as well as a spacious family room with built-ins and elsewhere. The master suite boasted a recently redone ensuite as well as two large walk-in closets. Out back, there was a chic swimming pool surrounded by patio space and sun lounger 
soldiers. The only time in recent years that the Chappaqua home doesn't serve as the Clintons' main home is when Hillary is in residence at the Capitol. In that case, the couple also maintains a property called Whitehaven, which they've owned since departing the White House. In 2019, Hillary offered a rare peek into their part-time mansion located in Washington, D.C., which was a neo-Georgian residence that she'd redone over the years. Located a mere three kilometers from the White House, this property cost the Clintons $2.85 million and spans 5,500 square feet of space. The stately mansion features an airy conservatory room and out on the grounds, there's a large swimming pool and stunning gardens. Hillary said when they were looking at this home, the gardens were just the most amazing that I had seen anywhere in my real estate tour. Clearly, Hillary has a thing for gardens. After purchasing the red brick built house, which dates back to 1951, one, Hillary had the place extensively renovated from 2003 to 2006. She had the help of interior designer Rosemary Howe to help carry this out and in the end, the home was more light filled with open plan spaces to relax and entertain. Most of the rooms now also open to the gorgeous gardens outside. Some of the other things that were done to the Clinton's Washington home included refitting the bathrooms and kitchens as well as new furnishings. At the time, Hillary said she loves using the outdoor area at this property post large groups of people as there's plenty of space, the landscaped garden, pool, and even a pool house. All right, everyone. Now that we've checked out the homes of Bill and Hillary Clinton over the years, that's gonna wrap up today's house tour. Before we go, answer this question for me. If you ever lived in the White House, what do you think would be your favorite perk or part of the property to enjoy? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat.